I'd also like to bring up with me Bob Monroe, the visual effects supervisor.
you know, both Adrian and Sarah also have a lot of humanity, and um, I think it's it's easy to sympathize with them, even when their characters are doing things that are very unsympathetic. So, um, but the we were lucky. The casting process was was pretty straightforward, and they were they're courageous actors. You know, not everybody would do what Adrian does in this movie, <laughs> <laughs> at least at least not publicly. <laughs> They were attracted to the fact that it was dangerous. Yes? Where was that barn? And was it there, or did you build it for that as a set? It was a real, this is kind of a funny story, but um, uh, it, was a, it is a real barn, but it's right in the middle of Toronto. And in fact, so is that forest. It's, um, it's actually uh, an area that's called uh, Black Creek Pioneer Village, and they preserved these buildings. That barn is I think it was built in the early 19th century. Um, and, uh, and then the interior of the barn was built in a studio, as you might imagine. But that was a real barn as well that we disassembled and then reassembled inside the stage. It was actually a really cool set. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was crazy. Like you took, if you walked 20 yards um, out of that forest, you were in the projects. You might get a cap in your ass. <laughs> Guillermo is like, you know, the, I keep describing him as like a great impresario of fantasy film. And um, I had met him in Portugal, actually, at a film festival. And if you've ever seen him or heard him interviewed, he's a very big, gregarious, warm guy. And he said, uh, you know, man, I'd really like to produce a film for you. Or maybe he said, I'd really like to produce a fucking film for you. <laughs> And, uh, uh, and I thought of Splice, which is something that you know, I had in my back pocket for a long time. And uh, I didn't say that to him right away, but sort of through a series of events, like, he got the script and he really liked it. And uh, I, I have one more, this becomes a very complicated, long story of the way the film was financed, but ultimately he became the executive producer and he was really just like our godfather. He was just there to support us in whatever way he could. And, you know, he, uh, he made some comments about the script, he made comments about the cut that were really great. Um, and uh, yeah, he helped, you know, he's just, he's just a super guy. But really, I don't, he didn't get a lot of money or anything out of it. Um, yes? Uh, Rob's reaction to the scene after uh, Adrian Brody's indiscretion, he chuckles about that. And right. it seem to be really intense part. And my question is whether there was, supposed to, there was intentionally Well, I wasn't, you know, that's, a, that's like an amazing question. I wasn't here in this room, so I, I didn't hear this audience, but <laughs> the previous meeting we had had exactly that reaction too. And, um, so I don't know what it was like in here exactly, but there I felt totally fine with that because to me it is funny um, in a very awkward, uncomfortable way. And uh, <laughs> as one can imagine. Um, I just hope that, I, think, I, I don't think there's anything wrong. I think a lot of the movies are really funny in this, you know. Um, I probably think it's funnier than most people do, but uh, but um, the only thing is I but I would be I wouldn't feel good if people were laughing later on in the scene, like when Clive and Elsa have their you know um, their discussion about how they harm Trent. And to me, that's not funny at all. That's really sad. And, uh, but you never know. Like when you do something like this, making this film is such a tightrope walk in a way without a net because. For a lot of reasons, one because it is an independent film, we didn't have a lot of money. We were trying to do a lot with a little, and you never know if that's going to work. Um, and then the other thing is, yeah, we put some pretty, pretty crazy things in the movie. And I, you know, you're the second audience, American audience, to see the film, um, at least a public audience. And uh, and I, said, yeah, I don't know uh, how what people would think of it. I just have no clue. And I, we were, we've all been involved with it for so long. Like we don't have any objectivity. At this stage. So, uh, yeah, so you never know. So, maybe people think it's funny when places it shouldn't get. Yeah. <laughs>